Welcome to Roboc Geek 101 Arduino ID installation. This video is for Windows users and today we're going to show you how to install the drivers for the Geek Duino and install the Arduino IDE. We're also going to run a test program to make sure everything is running smoothly before we go to our next Roboc Geek 101 lesson. So the first thing we're going to do is plug in our micro USB cable. On one end we've got it plugged into our computer. The other end we're going to plug it into our Geek Duino. We should see this green power light over here. Regarding these red and this green light here, you may or may not see some lights on depending on what code's on, but don't worry about it right now. On Windows, you should see an installing device driver software. You can click here for status to see everything coming through. This might look a little bit different on Windows 8 and Windows 10. You might get a prompt asking for your permission to install the drivers. Go ahead and let them install. What it's installing is a serial converter. That's what actually does all of the conversion for the serial data to the board. And we've also got our serial port, so that's the actual interface we're going to program on. Now you might not see this come up right away. You might want to give it one to two minutes before it actually shows up. And if you want to check you're going to open up your device manager. The easiest place to do that is go to your start menu and start typing in device manager. You should see this device manager come up. You can also find the device manager by going to computer, properties, device manager. You're looking for ports common LPT. You see this little triangle here? We're going to click on that and that's going to expand out the data. So you should see USB, serial port, com, then a number. Your number will probably be 3, 4, 5, something low. Mine's higher because every time I plug in a new Geek Duino, it gets its own com port number. That way I can have multiple plugged into a system at once and not worry about conflicts. If you want to be 100% sure that this is your port, all you need to do is unplug your Geek Duino. Mm -hmm. And that whole COM port LPT went away. Some systems have a hard-coded COM port 1 by default. And this is just sort of a relic of some old Windows things. This is not the port you're going to be programming on. So when I plug my device back in, my COM port comes back. If you see this port in the device manager, you're ready to install Arduino. So go ahead and skip ahead in this video, and we'll show you exactly what you need to do to get Arduino installed. So if you don't see this, something's gone wrong with the automatic installation, so you have to manually install the drivers. So again, if you see this serial port, you can skip ahead in the video. Otherwise, right now we'll take a brief look at what it takes to install the FTDI drivers manually. You're going to go to ftdichip.com. The FTDI chip on the board is what allows us to talk from USB to the chip, so that's the drivers we need. So on ftdichip.com we're going to go to drivers, and we want to pick VCP drivers. Now we are going to recommend that you go to installation guides, go down and find the installation guide for your version of Windows. So this PDF will guide you through everything you need to get your drivers installed if they don't automatically install for whatever reason. We're going to go back to this drivers page, this VCP drivers page. And if we go down, we'll see Windows, all versions. We've got our latest version of the FTDI driver. This will allow you to download the individual driver to manually install it. Like I said, the installation guide will tell you everything about that. Over here, you also have a setup executable. You can download this, and it's just going to be an EXE that has a wizard that will go through manually installing the drivers for you. So go ahead and open it. If you get any warnings, go ahead and run. First we'll need to extract. And we'll just go through the wizard. So we'll click Next, accept the agreement, Next, let it copy, and then we're done. When you're done with the executable, go ahead and go back to your device manager and make sure you've got your COM port. Now that we have our hardware installed, let's install the software. Arduino.cc is the official Arduino site. This is where you can find the Arduino IDE, the software that's going to let us program and upload to the Geekduino. 
Make sure you're at Arduino.cc. There are some unofficial software pieces out there on different sites, and Arduino.cc is where you can get the latest and greatest. Let's go ahead and click and download. Right now, Arduino 1.6.7 is the latest software. We have tested all of our code with it, and it works with this. As soon as this updates, you probably will want to grab the latest version, whether that's 1.6, 8, 9, so on and so forth. But for right now, we'll just get 1.6.7. For Windows, you have the Windows installer and the Windows zip for non-admin install. So the installer is a little bit easier, but if you don't have admin privileges on your computer, the zip file can be handy. We're going to go ahead and download both of them, just so we can see what they both look like. Now, when you click here, you're going to get this message about supporting the Arduino software. Arduino is free software, but it's really great software and totally supported by donations as well as Arduino hardware. If you want, feel free to make a donation. Otherwise, click Just Download. I'm going to go back, and while that's downloading, I'm also going to download this Windows zip file. So let's go ahead and run this installer file, Arduino 1.6.7 Windows. If you get any messages, go ahead and let Arduino run. I get this window. I agree. By default, you need the Arduino software installed. This USB driver is for the Arduino Uno, so if you're using an Arduino Uno, go ahead and install this. Otherwise, if you want, you can uncheck it. I recommend leaving it because you never know what hardware you're going to use. Start menu and desktop shortcuts are nice, though optional, depends on what you want. And you definitely want this associate.ino files. That means that when you double click an Arduino.ino file, it'll automatically open an Arduino. I'm going to go ahead and leave this in the default installation folder. If you get a Windows security message, you can go ahead and install. Depending on what options you picked, you might see this several times, so go ahead and click it on it multiple times. Once setup is completed, we can click close. Since I chose to have the Arduino IDE leave a shortcut on my desktop, I've got Arduino right here. You can also type in Arduino on your start menu. Or you can go to all programs and find the Arduino software. If you get any security alerts, go ahead and allow access for the software. Here we have our IDE open. If you had any problems running that installer, you can always do the zip installation. So again, I downloaded this Windows zip file. The zip file should look like this, Arduino 1.67 Windows, with a little zip icon. I'm going to go ahead and right click and extract all. I'm going to go ahead and let Windows unzip these files. Once the extraction process is done, you should see this Arduino 167 folder wherever you told the extractor to run it. If you want, feel free to move it. So we could grab this folder and throw it on our desktop. We'll open this up. We're going to see a lot of different files here. This Arduino program is the one that you're going to want to run. So again, whether you've installed it using this zip file whether you went through the Windows installer and have it in your programs file, the program is going to run the same. If you are using this zip file, you might see these folders like libraries and hardware. We do not recommend that you edit anything in here. There'll be another folder to edit that. We'll show you in a minute. So we're going to want to run Arduino at least once. If you get any security errors, just go run. You'll allow access if you get any security alerts. And you'll see the Arduino environment here. Before we can get started in the IDE, there's one more thing we need to do. So we're going to close this folder. Here we have the Robot Geek GitHub page. We will have links directly to this in the video and on our Getting Started Guide. But you can always go to github.com robotgeek slash robot geek libraries and tools 
The libraries and tools are files that we're going to use both in Robot Geek 101 as well as for our Robot Geek kits. This download zip is the file you want, and it's going to download a standard zip file. Let's go ahead and extract all. We're just going to extract downloads. You'll see this folder, Robot Geek Libraries and Tools Master. You want to open this, and you should see libraries and Robot Geek sketches. In a second explorer window, we are going to navigate to our My Documents folder. Sometimes this will be just be Documents. In this folder you should see an Arduino folder. When you first open the Arduino IDE, it actually created this folder. If for whatever reason you don't see an Arduino folder, open up your Arduino IDE again, Go to File, Preferences, and you should see Sketchbook Location. This will give you the exact location of the Arduino folder that we're looking for. So go ahead and navigate to that folder. Once we open it, we should see a Libraries folder. This is going to be an empty Libraries folder. So what we need to do is grab our Libraries and our Robot Geek Sketches folder, and drag them right into this Arduino folder. You'll get this message about replacing the folder. Go ahead and say yes to overwrite the files. So now, in your My Documents Arduino, you should be able to double click on Libraries, and you'll see a bunch of different library folders like this. If you go back and double click on Robot Geek Sketches, you should see RG101, Tests, and Tools. Now, if you've previously installed different libraries and you don't want to overwrite anything, you can always open up Libraries open up the libraries folder from our Robot Geek folder and manually and drag and drop all of these folders into your Arduino libraries folder. If you still have the IDE open, you're going to want to close it. This is going to allow us to actually see the libraries. So let's open up our IDE again. The first thing we're going to do is check to see if our libraries were installed correctly. So we're going to go to File, Sketchbook, Robot Geek Sketches, Tests, library test. This is going to include several libraries. All we need to do is click this checkbox, verify. And if everything worked correctly, we should see this done compiling message. So the last thing we're going to do before moving on to the next video is actually upload a program to our Geekduino. Let's open the program, go to File, Examples, Basic, Blink. This code is going to turn the built-in LED on and off. Under Tools, we need to go to Port and we need to pick our port. So this port is going to be the same port number that you saw in your device manager. For board, we need to pick Arduino Duemila Nove or Dies Mela. These are the boards that the Arduino, the Geekduino was based off of. Once you pick board, you're also going to see processor come up. It should default to 328 and that's what we want it to be. Once we've picked our board, we should see down here Arduino do Mila Nova Dies Mila at Mega328 and then our COM port. So now let's click this arrow button, Upload. The upload will compile the sketch and then upload it. If everything's gone correctly, you're going to see Done Uploading. And on the Geekduino board, right here, you're going to see this LED blinking on and off. That's the basics of getting your Arduino IDE set up. The next video in our series is going to show you how to start programming and interacting with your Geekduino.